Hey, it's Katie and Penny, and welcome to Pocket Coaching. So every week, we are going to be having a conversation with you about you and your pet's health journey, just to really lift you up and to build community and really just share some positive energy so you can start your week off on the right foot. So with that being said, to start things off, Penny and I really wanted to talk to you today about something that just comes up again and again, because it's really the foundation of health. And that is being your own advocate. So Penny, when I say be your own health advocate, like what do you think of? How does that sit for you? What thoughts come up? Yeah, well, as a pet parent, we, we've chosen to bring into our family someone who's not human. And they do grow up and they get older and they become an adult, but they're always dependent on us to be a part of the family. We're the, we're the one making decisions for them. We're the one who is introducing them to how to live in a human society. And that brings a pretty hefty responsibility for us to make decisions that are actually right for the animal, not just right for us. That means we need to understand what their needs are. We need to understand who they are as a species. We need to understand what's a good choice for them and what's a bad choice for them. And, you know, every single one of you guys is a 2.0 pet parent. You've woken up to some of the misconceptions, some of the myths, some of the just false advertising and marketing that's trying to teach you that to be a good pet parent, you have to give dry biscuits of the same flavor every day with not, you know, to no nutrients in it. I mean, that is classic example of what we've led to believe is being good parenting, you know, to vaccinate every six months or something like that. These are the things that we're told um, because this is what's been perpetuated through the veterinary community. This is what they learn at, at vet school. This is what um, the drug companies and the pet food companies and those great big pharma groups are trying to promote because, of course, they've got a business to serve, right? But what's actually best for the animals? So because my background is as a welfare scientist, I'm a zoologist for, the, for animal welfare, and I work at the applied end of the scale. So I'm always seeing the animal in front of me, suffering or not suffering. And it's usually in almost every situation because of a decision humans have made that hasn't sort of served that animal properly. So I know that you love your pets and wanna do the right thing. You love them as family members, you want them to be with you forever. But do you actually know how to be a confident health advocate for them rather than being swayed by, you know, what you're being told when you go into the vet, what you're being told when you go to the grocery store, what you're being told on TV when you see the advertising and the marketing and stuff like that. And so often we feel a little inferior because we're like, actually, I, what do I know? What, what, I just kind of took all this for granted. And now I'm starting to question it, but I'm not certain. And so it's not just about knowing that you need to be a health advocate. It's really, I want to show you how to confidently be a health advocate with certainty, with, with, with like a sense of presence when you're going into a vet clinic or anything like that, to know that these are your black lines, these are your red lines, these are the things you won't cross. These are the things that you believe are right for your pets, even if that comes into conflict with what you're being told or what the, the preconceived notion is. So it's a very big mind shift kind of thing for pet parents, but it's something that we absolutely always need to do uh, when I have a new client is, is to take this journey. So how actually, let's, let's build a scenario for one second and you're in the vet and in vet's office with your pet and you know your pet better than your vet does. The vets are studying the medicine, but you know your pet. And they're sitting there saying, this is what we should do for your pet. And something in your mind is giving you an alarm bell. It's going, oh, I don't know if I feel comfortable about that. I don't know if that's the right thing. And the problem with that is you're feeling that emotion, but then your brain says, but I don't know the answer because I'm not a vet. I don't know. I'm not equipped with this knowledge. Therefore, I'm just going to defer my decision making to the expertise of the vet and do the thing that they say, even though I'm feeling like this is not a good choice, that I feel like this isn't right for the animal. That's the situation I want to take you out of forever, that you never feel that conflict of your head and your heart against each other. 
but that you can go in and you can know in your heart whether that's right or not for your animal. And your head is backing you up with that knowledge of actually, do you know what? I can tell you six reasons why that's not the right thing. And then you can have a dialogue with your vet. It's not a case of building an enemy scenario. It's a case of working with them to say, do you know what? I am the pet parent. I get to make the responsibility, responsible decisions. I listen to your advice and your guidance, but I bring with me all this other stuff as well. And I put all of that together to then make a decision on behalf of my animal that I can then feel confident that they're not going to suffer as a result. So that's a, that's a really long answer to that question, <laughs> but it's such a big issue. Um, and it's, it's something that holds a lot of people back from being able to give their pets the right level of care for that amazing life of being disease free of that extended lifespan thing that the thing that we're all chasing after. Yeah, it, it, it's really a marrying of like you said, kind of your heart and your intuition and your feeling, because that's really important and also the knowing because if you don't know anything about what your options are or what's going on or what could be going on then or what could be best it's hard to have that conversation because you're like I have this feeling but I don't really know what else there is and then you're stuck right so it's it's the combination and I think what's really interesting like about the difference between being an advocate for your pet versus being an advocate for yourself is you're not in your pet's body. And so like, you know, I, I think we probably know our pets best, right? We know how to read them best, but then like on, on the human side, we have to think about tapping into what we're knowing about our body and what we're actually experiencing. What are our symptoms? What are we um, feeling physically, feeling mentally, what has worked, what hasn't, what, like, th there's so much value there in being able to listen to yourself and your experiences. And, you know, I hear again and again and again from people that I work with that, like, their symptoms are negatively impacting them. They're not living their best life for whatever reason. And they're being told, your labs look fine, or you look fine, everything's fine. And you're like, no, but I'm not, but I don't know how to express that. And I don't know, right? And it's hard to kind of speak up if your healthcare team is telling you one thing or saying, this is your one option. And I think what I want to say is like, become a part of your own healthcare team. Like as silly as that might sound, like be the leader so that right? You didn't go to medical school. That's fine. Have someone on your team who did, right? That person's also never lived in your body. So you need to be there. Your medical person needs to be there, right? If you haven't studied nutrition, your doctor hasn't studied nutrition, have someone who studied nutrition, right? Like have the, the, the people that make up your team that have the knowledge to support you, but that will listen to you and that will help you understand and give you the credibility that you deserve because at the end of the day, no one else is living that life, but you are. So I think there's a lot of overlap, Penny, and like what we're talking about, whether it's you becoming your own health advocate or you becoming your pet's health advocate. And that is listening to that intuition, having the knowledge and having a support system around you, a community to fill whatever gaps there is and, and to provide you with that support from a variety of different angles. I mean, that's a whole nother rabbit hole. I'm sure we'll go down at some point. Um, but I think that that's a, a really relevant um, piece there as well. Well, Penny, I think this is where we should wrap it up because I know <laughs> everyone knows. We, we could go in 10 more directions. Yeah, exactly. And we could just forever. keep going on this. <laughs> Um, but I think that's a really great place to leave it for today. And I hope that that leaves you feeling empowered and encouraged that your knowledge, your expertise is just as valuable as anyone else's. And you have the power to advocate for yourself and for your pets. And we're here to support you in being able to do that. So guys, just before we go, because we really need to wrap this up for you, <laughs> um, 
I know that most of you guys are going to be thinking about Christmas presents for your pets because it's getting to that time of year and I know that I always buy them um, my pets and uh, Christmas presents too so I want you to be mindful this year to not fall into the trap of buying something that is actually going to undo some of the beautiful things that you've been working on so far this year in building that longevity lifestyle and putting into practice these health principles and, and longevity systems so to put it all into practice the things that we've been talking about today because where do you where do you start being a confident health advocate right it's making decisions it's knowing more stuff so to put that into practice we've actually put together um, a pretty cool thing for Black Friday, which is the perfect timing for leading up into that Christmas season. Um, and it allows you to start taking that leadership for your, your pet's health destiny. Yeah, absolutely. And we're not going to give away all the details here, but it's, we'll call it a bundle of resources to help you do just that, um, to feel more empowered. And yes, Penny, I am... <laughs> I love the Christmas presents for the fur babies. So I think this is really important. Um, but it's a bundle of resources that we've actually never offered before. And it's designed to help you become that confident health advocate that we're talking about during the holiday season um, when it's especially relevant. And just as kind of a sneak preview, if you love all the live workshops and events that we do, this is going to be right up your alley. So for more information and to check it out, go to petandparentlongevity.com slash Black Friday. That's petandparentlongevity.com slash Black Friday for all of the details. Um, but this is just a Black Friday offer. So um, yeah, definitely check it out sooner rather than later. Yeah, it won't be around for long. So guys, that's Pocket Coaching. Thank you for joining us. And we are going to speak to you again next week in your inbox at the start of the week to give you some incredible, um, well, we hope it's incredible, insights and inspiration for um, continuing on your pet parent journey. All right. Talk to you then and happy holidays.